Hello, I'm Yoko, and here's year 17 of Galaxy Clan. Playlists and other things below, you know the drill by now. Also, happy Easter. This should be coming out the day before on Saturday, but I might be late, so maybe it's Easter today. Who knows? And while some big things did happen this year, I actually took it kind of easy, and there's not anything big in regards to animatics and stuff like that. Still quite a lot of bonus pictures and stuff to look forward to, though. And let's start with the Star Clan section. Sadly, the first one in Star Clan this year is the five moon old blue kit. He died after sneaking into the medicine cat den and getting into the herb stores where he ate deaf berries that he found. Side note, I know deaf berries can be used for medicinal purposes, specifically if the seed is removed, I think, but it is still concerning the fact that we had these in camp, and I'll come back to that later. But yeah, Troublesome Blue Kit died one moon before he would have been made an apprentice, and I feel really bad. His full name would have been Blue Clover, which is really cute to me. And we'll see his siblings later, but for now, let's move on to a new face. The 237 moon old responsible French Fry, who was a good mediator and a fast runner, apparently. She's another really old cat that we saved from being thrown into a lake like Caramel last year, and I'm kind of wondering if I should even continue to proceed on that prompt because every outcome kind of just makes me sad, and the cat is usually ancient if they do join and then they immediately die the next moon. French Fry specifically died from infected wounds, which was sad, and once again I must say that two legs that do this really are evil. Lizard Snap, her apprentice, and a new face and clam were the ones to specifically save French Fry, but yeah, that's really all there is to say about her. And unfortunately, next up is Cherry Twist, who died at 17 moons old. And they came out as a demi boy on the same moon that they died, which makes me really sad. That being said, Cherry Twist uses he they pronouns. He died on patrol when he was buried in a landslide. Earlier in the year, Frost Lichen helped Cherry Twist with a problem that they had giving advice for an apparently stupid decision that they had made, which makes me wonder if it had to do with Cherry Twist's one-sided crush that he had on Echo Lily. I never saw them do anything about it in-game, which makes me sad, because that could have been cute. And I was really interested in Cherry Twist as a character, and I'm sad that they died so young. But next up, Truffle Sprout died at 63 moons old, and can we please keep a deputy alive and around for longer than like a year? He was doing his best as deputy and helped break up a disagreement on a patrol between a mentor and apprentice, guiding them to talk to a mediator afterwards. He also helped escort his bestie Snake Eye on herb patrols a few times and tried to look out for his brother Wormshade. Unfortunately, Truffle Sprout also ran into an injured loner that he tried to stop the bleeding of, but sadly that cat died and never made it to join the clan and we have no idea who that was. Truffle Sprout seeked advice from Hollowstar, but the next moon he went on a solo hunting patrol where he ended up getting trapped in a snowstorm and then hid in a mountain cave. He was found dead the next morning, and it pains me that he died the same way that his mom did, but alone in game. So I thought what if Lavender Heather was there with him and guided him to Star Clan when it was time? And congratulations, I made a sad event even sadder. <laughs> I'm in pain. Uh, rest in peace, Truffle Sprout, and now on to the last death of the year, which was unfortunately Small Rush, who died at 14 moons old. She was faithful with steady paws, and there's only one surviving kit from the Pinkie Pie litter now. Going back to the moon that her brother died, Small Kit had woke up early to say hi to the Dawn Patrol, while her brothers had just snuck off to the Medicine Cat den. I'm sure they were just playing is probably what she thought at least until Blue Kit died, but she made it to her apprentice ceremony and was apprenticed to Stone Fawn, who she saw take on a fox by the neck on her very first patrol, and then the two of them stole the prey that the fox had caught. The patrol was cut short after that because it had begun to rain. Stone Fawn had also helped Smallpaw feel comfortable in Galaxy Clan, saying that she belongs here and we all have a bond, we're all Galaxy Clan after all. Smallpaw was also in awe of Thunder Spirit's conflict resolution skills, and in general, she seemed to respect her clanmates a lot, and she was honored for her loyalty at her warrior ceremony. Small Rush died when she saw a cat about to be killed by rogues. Very big blood warning for a picture going up in 3, 2, 1. She ran in to save them, but died herself, and Branch Deer barely managed to chase off the rogues off on his own. 
And the picture is gone now. Small Rush seems like a sweetheart who wasn't able to ignore someone in trouble, and I'm really sad that she's gone. But it's time to move on to the currently living clanmates now. Starting with the 110 moon old Hollow Star, who somehow still has eight lives, and his mate Hilfuz is here too, who is now 119 moons old. These two are really getting up there in age, and I expect Hilfuz to retire soon. Starting with Hollow Star, he called an important meeting the same day that a badger set was found, wanting to make sure the trap tragedy from last year was not repeated, and he tried giving advice to his former deputy Truffle Sprout, but Hollowstar has been feeling a bit paranoid this year it seems. He was rethinking his life choices, swearing the clan is plotting against him, and hasn't understood Star Clan's resentment towards him apparently. Though he did feel blessed by Star Clan on the moon that one of his daughters got her warrior name, so there's that. Interestingly, Hollowstar was hoping that Micah Kit was safe in Star Clan. So I think that death might specifically be haunting him a bit, and on a bigger scale, the fact that he killed Micah Kit's mom. But yeah, I think he might be spiraling a bit, but Hilfuz is here, and Snow pretended to be a big strong warrior for Flight Kit too, which was really cute. And when Snow was able to leave the camp, Fuzz immediately followed the trail of a rogue, who Fuzz intimidated by standing on a high rock ledge until the rogue uttered an apology and turned tail to leave. Didn't even have to do anything. But unfortunately, towards the end of the year, Hill Fuzz fell from a cliff and broke Fuzz's leg. So now Snow has a permanent limp and Snow's dealing with that injury right now. Hill Fuzz also is still alive, which is a miracle considering that this is the first time both parents in the Burdock family have lived to see their kits become warriors. Hilfuz has been giving advice to Holostar, and I think that Snow is worried about him. But on to the new deputy. It is surprisingly the 62 moon old Stone Fawn, and her mate Lizard Snap is being drawn here as well. I really think that Holostar has been seeking out more level headed and cats with calming presence in general to be deputy to kind of balance him out. Stone Fawn's a surprise, but happy to have another she cat in power either way. Early in the year, Stone Fawn gave advice to Yarrow Patch, and as mentioned, she mentored Small Paw. Stone Fawn was also happy for her time spent with French Fry, despite French Fry only being here a moon. And she's also had a cute play fight with her mate, and I think Stone Fawn is a bit surprised she was chosen for this position, and thinks that Lizard Snap would have been a far better choice. But her mate's there to tell her that she's amazing and she's going to do great. And speaking of Lizard Snap, I don't think Holostar chose her because she has a decent dislike towards him that she's had ever since the truth of Bright Star's death came out. But Lizard Snap has chased out dogs twice this year, and she smirked when showing Stone Fawn how to shift her weight to make less noise, knowing that her mate was watching with more intent that was necessary. These two are very cute. Lizard Snap also had an apprentice this year, and she went on patrols with Stone Fawn and Small Paw a lot. Though at one point, Lizard Snap did have to go to Thunder Spirit to sort out a minor argument with her apprentice. Overall, our girls are going strong, and Clan Jen, if you take Stone Fawn from me, Next year, I am throwing hands. Let our deputies stay deputy, please. But moving on to the medicine cat den, we have drama. Okay, so starting with Flame Bear, who is now 71 moons old, he was startled awake by a vivid dream one day, and I think whatever it is he saw, it led him to collecting the death berries in an action he thought was necessary at the time. And on the moon that Blue Kit died, after getting into said death berries, Flame Bear was once again scaring traumatized children, and he was hissing randomly at the kits. Flame Bear, I know you're upset that kits keep making dumb choices, but they're babies and yelling at them doesn't help. He argued with Snake Eye on a patrol that moon and passive-aggressively mentioned wanting to take on another apprentice on another moon that he was out with Snake Eye. And these two actually can't go out on patrol together anymore because it always ends with them fighting and they never get anything done. And Flame Bear has a hate bar on Snake Eye. Flame Bear also has a hate bar on Kale, Cavern Bounce, Hollow Star, and most upsettingly, his own son. I've been trying to have Thunder Spirit smooth things out, but Flame Bear hates so many cats for reasons I have no idea why, and Thunder Spirit can only do so much for their son. Flame Bear is really concerning me, and I have fear for the next year. I know murder events roll pretty likely if a cat has a hate bar, and I'm scared. Flame Bear, please don't murder and go to therapy instead. 
But moving on to the now 49 moon old snake eye, she is just trying to live her life. She tried to help interpret the omen that Flame Bear seemed to have gotten, but disagreed with the opinion that bringing deaf fairies into camp was a good idea. And she was appalled at how Flame Bear was so horrible to the kids after Blue Kid's death. She brought up that yelling at her as a kid after the snake almost killed her never helped. And all he's doing is traumatizing them more. She's kind of done with Flame Bear at this point, And while she doesn't have a hate bar, her dislike is decently high. She has been going on patrols with cats like Truffle Sprout and her dad, Branch Deer. She's sad that she lost her close friend, Truffle Sprout, but she's been trying to stay strong in general. And outside the tense atmosphere of the Galaxy Clan medicine den, a uh, rat splinter from J-Clan came asking for herbs and she was happy to help out her friend. And there's actually a new face in the clan that Snake Eye is crushing on right now, but you'll see him later. I'm kind of rooting for them. Snake Eye could really use some happiness. But moving on to the mediators, Thunder Spirit is 108 moons old now and they've been doing really good despite their worries about their son. Thunder Spirit really is trying and has a lot of love for Flame Bear, but he's kind of just a mess right now and I don't know if Thunder Spirit can help. They're really doing their best. But beyond that, Thunder Spirit came out as non-binary this year and uses they them pronouns. Perhaps the Viper Clan mediator Okerforn made them start thinking gender stuff since they're non-binary too. But Thunder Spirit has helped resolve herb gathering disputes in J-Clan, helped Lizard Snap with her apprentice when they had a minor argument, and Thunder Spirit has statuses all the time that they listen to both sides of arguments, which I think is really good. They did fail to settle some personal disputes related to Viper Clan, but that's understandable due to how messy things are there. More details later. Thunder Spirit is even closer to Kale now, and while the romantic like hasn't really risen that much, I have seen people say that they would be a cute QPR, um, which is a queer platonic relationship. Though I think Thunder Spirit knows that their son doesn't really approve of Kale as a cat for whatever reason, so that's something to think about. I personally don't see why Flame Bear has her issue. And there's actually another mediator this year, and she's a new face in clan. Meet the 23 moon old Pond, who is confident and a great speaker. She joined the clan at only 15 moons old, and she apparently grew up in a barn before this. On only the second moon of being in clan, she immediately decided that she wanted to be a mediator, and she was very excited that moon. This girl instantly knew what she wanted to do in the clan. She kind of feels like a little angel, honestly, and has been doing pretty good in clan. She was wondering if Flame Bear has gotten any prophecies lately, and I interpret that as her going therapist mode and trying to get him to open up in general with her a bit, maybe try to figure out why he's so tense right now. She sees that he's stressed and snappy with a lot of cats, and she's trying to help Thunder Spirit when it comes to soothing things over. Interestingly, Pond actually has a crush on both Gold Dazzle and Fuzzy Flake right now, so maybe in the future that might go somewhere, possible future Polly, who knows? But yeah, Pond is super cute, and I'm happy that she's fitting in well. Now onto the warriors. Starting with Kale, who's 111 moons old now. And Kale also came out as trans this year, specifically apogender, which is basically feeling an indifference or apathetic towards one's own gender. That being said, Kale uses any pronouns and is kind of just vibing. Kale and Thunder Spirit actually came out one moon apart from each other, which is very cute. Early in the year, Kale playfully let Oopsie Daisy know that her butt wiggles when she's hunting, which is very on brand for her. But Kale's Viper Clan kin has not been doing so well. And reminder, Kale has a niece and a nephew there. Well, they used to have them anyway. Kale had tried to sneak to see their niece Elk Flick on the border, but the rest of the patrol caught him, and it came out that Kale's nephew Chirp Song died. Then later that same moon, Elk Flick and two other cats got kidnapped by Two Legs in Viper Clan. So there goes Kale's kin there for now. But speaking of kin, so this cat named Jinx Hill joined us, and she's 111 moons old, nervous, a lore master, and a talented swimmer, and she is the exact same age as Kale, while also being a mostly white cat. So that being said, Jinx Hale is Kale's sister. She was invited into the clan on a patrol, but on that same moon, she went on a patrol herself, and on that patrol, she warned Fuzzy Flake and his apprentice of an upcoming wave that would have swept them away when they were gonna cross a river. And I like that being the event that she joined the clan instead. I think it adds some drama. 
Well, not drama, but interest towards her. And it does fit her good swimmer trait. She would know how the water and stuff would work. Anyway, it's fun to have her here, but she honestly hasn't done too much beyond that one patrol. Next up, though, we have the 80 moon old Oopsie Daisy, and she's been a little all over the place in a fun way. Kale told her that her butt wiggles, which I assume she responded with a giggle and going, Oopsie Daisy. Side note, Oopsie Daisy currently has a one-sided crush on Kale right now. We'll see if that goes anywhere. Oopsie Daisy also has a crush on Yarrow Patch right now, which I'm shipping a bit more, but it's up to Clan Gen to see if anything happens between either of these. Oopsie Daisy was seen playing with a kitty pet, which I feel like was one of the new faces that joined this clan that you'll see later. And something that made me laugh is that Oopsie Daisy wants to be deputy, and the idea of an Oopsie Daisy star is really funny, but I don't think we'll end up getting there, especially since she still needs an apprentice to be eligible, but who knows? <laughs> Clan Gen is very surprising with who it decides to be deputy. But yeah, Oopsie Dizzy's fun. I just love her. And next up is the 76 moon old branch deer, and he was the one that reported the old badger set that led to Holostar's clan meeting. Branch Deer has been thinking that Holostar could be leading the clan better this year. Seemingly, he feels a little disappointed in his former mentor. Branch Deer has also gone on a couple of patrols with his daughter Snake Eye this year, since I figured he'd want to bond more with his one remaining kit, and they get along great. It's very cute. Branch Deer got trapped in a winter storm a moon after Truffle Sprout died, and while he lived, Branch Deer did suffer from some frostbite and also a very worried daughter. He took on a couple rogues after Small Rush had run in to help and died, and he feels guilty that she died, but that was a dangerous situation, and he's happy he at least saved the other cat, bringing him to the clan and glaring at Hollow Star while daring the leader to turn the kid away. And that's actually his apprentice right now, but we'll get into him later. Next up is the 66 Moon Old Wormshade, and he puffed out his chest in pride when his son was named. And they also took on a dog together, and Wormshade has actually been kind of funny in a way that has caused me to make some dumb decisions. Wormshade specifically kept running into cats that wanted to join on patrols and I thought it was funny so I was like sure Wormshade you can just invite everyone that seems to always be a kitty pet that wants to join. But guys I kid you not he invited pretty much every new cat that joined this year with maybe like one exception and help I overpopulated the clan. No mass extinction this year but I might have doomed next year because Wormshade specifically repeatedly keeps inviting cats and it was it was funny to me at the time. Also Wormshade was the cat that brought Rat Splinter to the camp when he wanted to see if Snake Eye could spare some herbs so Wormshade really is just bringing cats home this year, and that's pretty much it. I want to know what's going on in his head this year. But next up, we have the 62 Moon Old Yarrow Patch, and she watched in pride at Dream Paws Warrior Ceremony, but she actually does have a small dislike for her former apprentice now. Nothing too big, but it is there. Yarrow Patch also single-handedly stole prey from a fox this year. And she wanted to get to know Oopsie Daisy, so I sent them on a few patrols. Yarrow Patch is currently crushing on Oopsie Daisy as well, so as I said earlier, I ship it. I still think that Yarrow Patch would be a good deputy, but I'm happy to at least see another she-cat in the role. But yeah, she's kind of vibing. Moving on to her brother, Stag Chaser has mostly just been fading into the background, to be honest. He's mostly just hunted, nodded to the other clans at border patrols, and trained. At one point, he did catch a J-Clan apprentice with prey on our side of the border, and Stag Chaser just sent the young cat off with a warning, bringing the prey back to camp and reporting the incident to Stone Fawn. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> In the end, being a good warrior without any dramatic incidents is a good thing, but it sure makes it hard to fill out a video. But yeah, next cat. Here's a new face, the 52 Moon Old Firefog, who is adventurous and very clever. He was abandoned by Two Legs and invited to the clan by Wormshade, like pretty much ever one except french fry. He also joined with the scar that is near his tail already on him. Firefog has giant dragon vibes to me and he did roll the trait that I call thick dragon whiskers for his design aka the, the mustache he has which I think is really fun so I made his ribbon scale patterned. Firefog also rolled to have allergies so I'm saying it's pollen basically and this poor boy sneezes a lot in the spring. 
kind of ironic to this, Firefog is crushing on a medicine cat who probably would make his allergies act up more on the basis of her job. But Snake Eye and Firefog both like each other and I ship it. Reptile couple vibes, very fun. Poor Firefog is going to be like running those in the canon books though. Overall, he kind of just seems like a good guy from what I've seen. Hasn't done too much, but he was interested if Snake Eye had any prophecies. And another new face in the clan is the 38 moon old scavenger who is who is adventurous, an incredible runner, and very interesting, a good healer. She was invited by Wormshade and has been doing her best to learn clan customs, but she has a lot of thoughts related to her former kitty pet life, like trying to remember the taste of her kitty pet food that her two legs used to give her, and remembering her soft bed. Scavenger gives me pirate vibes for some reason. She's a torty too, but the only patch that she has is on her arm. Which which keeps reminding me of a peg leg or like a robotic arm for some reason and she just has gremlin vibes in general. She was totally a neighborhood cat that would have been the one knocking over trash cans and causing mayhem in the neighborhood. I don't think she's really taking clan life that seriously but I hope she does better because I really like her design. What cracks me up though is that she's right next to Frost Lichen since they have the same age. So when I'm skipping through the statuses each moon I'll see Scavenger reminiscing about her house cat life and then Frost Lichen will have a status like wishes others would stop judging him for his soft kitty pet past or ignoring gossip about his kitty pet past. And I just think it's really funny how on one end we have Frost Lichen who is trying really hard to leave his kitty pet life in the past just behind him and be a good warrior. And then you have Scavenger missing her wet food and her bed. <laughs> Frost Lichen has a small dislike for Scavenger, and I just kind of find this combo funny. Beyond that, Frost Lichen actually dislocated his joint at one point, and he accidentally put a mark on the wrong place during a border patrol, which made J-Clan upset and mad at him, despite him trying to apologize and explain himself. He's really just trying to fit in, and he seems really insecure about his past. But moving on, we have a new couple. The 38 moon old Gold Dazzle and the 36 moon old Fuzzy Flake are officially together and they have a really funny getting together story. Fuzzy Flake asked out Gold Dazzle to be his mate in the beginning of the year and she rejected him despite liking him back. And her status that moon was actually that she lied through her teeth. So for whatever reason, she lied to Fuzzy Flake when he asked her out. But Fuzzy Flake was respectful and waited basically a whole year to give her space. Honestly, when I see cats get rejected in game, it's not surprising if they just keep asking them out. So I was happy to see that he waited a good decent chunk of time. And eventually he did ask her out again, but she said no again. But on the very same moon that she said no, the event right underneath that said that Gold Dazzle asked out Fuzzy Flake to become mates and he said yes. So she really just said no and then went, wait, never mind, come back. <laughs> Gold Dazzle, honey, what was this chase that you made Fuzzy Flake do? I'm kind of wondering if she has commitment issues or she's worried about becoming mates in general, but she does want to. They do seem happy, but that is just kind of funny to me. Also, Fuzzy Flake fought and got hurt by a hawk this year and he later got an apprentice. And he actually is a really good teacher, which is cute. But yeah, beyond that, there's not much this year. Apparently, Fuzzy Flake thinks that Gold Dazzle is funny, which is cute. But Gold's mostly been doing stuff like snoring loudly and grooming in full view of everyone in camp. So she's kind of leaning more into her shameless trait this year. But happy to see that these two are finally together after having this pining that's been going on. As I mentioned earlier, Pawn does have a crush on both of them right now, but these two currently only like each other. But who knows about the future? But moving on to Fuzzy Flake's brother, Spring Haze is interesting this year. So the big thing is that his sister Osprey Claw has walked in his dreams specifically two times this year, and Spring Haze keeps thinking that he's meant for something greater. Side note, I do not think he's being brought to the Dark Forest. His sister is specifically just breaking into his dreams, which exists in a void and is not like a real space. And now I don't think that Osprey Claw is lying to her brother, and based on statuses of her and other Dark Forest cats, I think she is simply giving him information. Kind of like a spy. Like, she knows that she did bad. She does not care that she's in the dark forest. But I think she's trying to help. Frecklespot and Silkfur are plotting something, and who knows what that is. Also, I doubt they're plotting together, but both of them have been saying that they're plotting stuff and acting suspicious. Also, interestingly, Hopefern has been losing fights in the dark forest and limping and stuff, and I kind of think that Osprey Claw might be bullying her. But basically, I think 
week, Osprey Claw has told her brother to look out for signs that cats might be falling into the trap of training in the dark forest, but she's told him not to tell Hollowstar. They can be detectives and heroes together, and if Hollowstar finds out, Spring Haze might get hurt after all. I mean, Hollowstar is kind of unpredictable. But yeah, that's very interesting. I'm gonna be keeping an eye on these guys, and I hope they'll be okay. Next up is the now 29 moon old Guppy Shade, and he's mostly just vibing this year. I will say that he currently has a crush on Scavenger, which is pretty cute. It's one-sided right now, but I, I do ship it. It would be really fun to see. Guppy Shade was humming a tune while working, and I know that's just a trait that calm cats have, but it does remind me a lot of Flax Roar. And Guppy Shade also got an apprentice this year, who he made sure didn't chase a rabbit across to the Moss Clan border by accident. But yeah, Guppy Shade has mostly just been training his apprentice and keeping to himself this year. Nothing much to say, but he was a really good mentor. Moving on to the now 25 Moon Old Cavern Bounce. He's still been grumpy and has had a few minor arguments on patrols. He had a mutual dislike for Flame Bear, but on Cavern Bounce's side, he doesn't have a hate bar on the Medicine Cat. Cavern Bounce also has a pretty decent decent dislike bars towards Dream. Insert full name that you'll hear in a bit. So there's that. But Cavern Bounce does have a heart because he does have a one-sided crush on Frost Lichen right now. And on the same moon that Frost Lichen accidentally put a mark in the wrong place, Cavern Bounce was covering Frost Lichen for something minor, which I've interpreted to say that when they reported the incident back at camp, Cavern Bounce said that he was the one that messed up on patrol instead. Cavern Bounce is also proud of his mom becoming deputy. All her kits really are. Moving on to his brother, Ghost Snow. And side note, I started doing a low roll for cats that reached two years old with no crushes to see if they would like to come out as a romantic and or asexual because I feel bad that the headcanon cats that are one of these are pretty much just anyone that died single and without crushes and we're kind of just ending up with cats that people go oh yeah they died and never had someone that they liked so I guess they were aromantic or something and I just would like to know ahead of time so I think this is a fun way to add some representation. I'm going to keep rolling each year that they still have no romantic like to anyone in game but that being said Ghost Snow has come out as both aromantic and asexual so he's arrow ace and has no interest in relationships personally. Beyond that, he helped a lost Moss Clan apprentice this year and thought that he was meant for something greater, so I'd be interested to know what that much is about. Really hoping that the Dark Forest isn't trying to get involved with him. He has a Star Clan connection, so I hope they're not trying to trick him. But considering cats in the Dark Forest are plotting, I'm, I'm worried in general. He did, however, argue and borderline fight with a cat that was in J-Clan, which I feel like that was him defending the border mark mistake later, since he does think that his brother made that mistake, and Ghost Snow is very protective of his family. And he also has a dislike for Dream, but it's pretty small. But speaking of him, let's move on to Ghost Snow's sister. Echo Lily is now mates with the 22 moon old newly named Dream Smoke, who had asked her to be his mate about halfway through the year. He's charismatic, a great climber, and a good kit sitter. And these two honestly have been little troublemakers, and I think Echo Lily's brothers think that Dream Smoke is a bad influence on her. Dream Smoke tried to catch a rabbit across the Viper Clan border, but failed, and a Viper Clan patrol saw him do it. Echo Lily also snuck eating some prey while on patrol, where a hollow star of all cats was on the patrol with her. And she ended up getting in trouble because of course he scented that she ate prey. Also, Dream Smoke is a little player and he has a crush on literally everyone that's in his age group, though it's one-sided on most of them. This includes him liking Echo Lily's brothers who do not like him. Like maybe he's overcompensating for not getting enough love as a kid from Flame Bear, but based on how other cats feel about him, Dream Smoke is kind of giving a bit of ick to some cats. But we'll see. Echo Lily seems happy at least, so that's good. But very concerningly, Silkfur was apparently walking in her dreams. And no thanks, please leave her alone. I'm going to keep an eye on them, but that is very bad. Please stay away from her. Wishing for the best with these two, but please stop breaking the code, guys. The hearts all over Dream Smoke was a warning all along, I swear. Next up, we have the newly named Rushwind, who was named via community post. Thanks, guys. And he's 20 moons old, still childish, and a great hunter. He was honored for his self-respect at his warrior ceremony, and he also stole a rabbit from Viper Clan, and guys, what are you doing? Viper Clan is dangerous and scary. Please stop making them mad. 
I'm kind of wondering if they're hunting in specifically that territory that Viper Clan took from them during the last war. But Rushwind was also whining about clan duties, but he did chase out a dog with his dad. Unfortunately, he ran into a large kitty pet on patrol who is on my dislike list because that guy attacked Rushwind and now he has a scar. And normally I'd use this as an opportunity to throw an OC cameo in, but this is an actual cat that's in game. His name is Caesar, And I swear if he joins the clan later, I'm throwing hands. It's one thing when Kale swiped Thunder Spirit's ear when stress of a dog attack was happening, but this guy just just went for the neck on a pretty young cat, which is really concerning. Stinky behavior. I don't like him. Also, Rushwind was one of the few cats that likes Dream Smoke back, with Dream's many other crushes, so there's that. Next up, we have the two clan princesses, starting with the 14 moon old Nightfall, who was also renamed via community po polls. Again, thanks guys. The game wanted to name her Night Spot, and I'm not having her named after Freckle Spot. Um, she's lonesome, a lore master, and a good hunter. As a kid, she got grounded in the nursery after pranking Truffle Sprout, and when she was made an apprentice, she was immediately excited for battle training. She was apprenticed to Lizard Snap, and they chased out a dog together on their first patrol, turning back home after that to report the incident, and also because it began to rain. Nightfall was actually troublesome, and she talked back to Lizard Snap once, and Truffle Sprout had to break up a minor argument, but Thunder Spirit smoothed things over, and she really likes Lizard Snap now. Love to see the two girl bosses is working together. Nightfall is actually the only apprentice to graduate at 12 moons old this year, as everyone else just seemed to graduate at 13 moons old for some reason. Possible favoritism being the leader's daughter and all. Nightfall was also pretty close friends with Small Rush and has been really upset after her death, kind of keeping to herself more. But moving on to her sister, she's named Flight Strike now, and she's still childish, but is also a learner of lore and a talented swimmer. As a kid, she would try to sneak into the apprentice's den and got in Rushpaw's way a couple times. She purred as she touched noses with her mentor Fuzzy Flake, and they stayed out hunting in the rain longer than the other patrols that day, getting a successful hunt and a lot of prey. And side note, so much prey was brought back that day, the clan probably had a feast or something, I swear. Also, it's because of her patrol being raining that all the other apprentices that went out the same day had rain in the picture. And it wasn't anything serious, so if you guys fought a flood or something happened, no, it was just raining. <laughs> She pranked Branch Deer once, and she was honored for her humor on her warrior ceremony. She's really showing that odd family influence, and it's really cute. The duality of her and her sister is very fun to me, and I love them. They kind of remind me of Emberfeather and Ottertail. Next up is the 14 moon old Oriole Chirp, who is adventurous and fairly clairvoyant, and I feel bad for this guy. On the moon that Blue Kit died and Flame Bear hissed at babies, Oriole Kit was hiding from the other cats, so obviously Flame Bear scared him. He was apprenticed to Guppy Shade and caught a squirrel who tried to escape on his first patrol, surprising himself that he made the catch. Guppy Shade helped him gain confidence with other cats and pulled him away when Oriole Paw almost chased a rabbit onto Moss Glen territory. Oriole Chirp was honored for his observance and he's currently sad after losing his sister Small Rush as well. Hoping for the best of him next year, but I'm curious how he'll get along with this next cat. Meet the only apprentice in Galaxy Clan, the 13 moon old Midnight Paw, who is troublesome, a learner of lore, and a good speaker. And this is one of Snip Cloud's kits. If you didn't see the last Viper Clan stream, Midnight Paw was apprenticed to Serpent Star, but came back to camp one day with a bow around his neck. And Viper Clan does not like kitty pets at all. So via vote during a stream, Midnight Paw was exiled and we said he joined Galaxy Clan at the end of the year. And in Viper Clan, he actually died on the last moon, but that was after we said he was joining Galaxy Clan. So we bent the canon a little bit and said that he had a near death experience instead, which really fit well into the fact that Small Rush died to rogues in my Galaxy Clan save file. So I made it that she did that trying to save him. Branch Deer is his current mentor, and I'm interested in how he'll fit in considering that he's Snip Cloud's son and all. And I did just edit him in, so no one really has relationships or anything with him yet, so there's that. Also with the fact that Small Rush died saving him, I'm wondering how he'll get along with Oriole Chirp in the future. He was coded into the clan after I played the year, so I really know nothing about his experience in the clan right now, but I'm interested in seeing more from him. Lastly in the nursery, we currently have the 75 moon old Wigglebutt, which is an amazing name. She's confident and fairly clairvoyant, and she joined with her free moon old kits. The noisy rooster kit, who is renamed VS Community Pole, and he has heterochromia, which is 
something I'm really excited to see and I've been waiting to see it and it's year 17 and we're only just now getting our first cat with heterochromia. The next cool thing I'm waiting to see is uh, Vitiligo. She also has the noisy lark kit who has a fun little mustache that I love and also the bullying abyss kit who was born with a twisted paw but her leg fluff does kind of make that a bit hard to see. Also when drawing Wigglebutt the trace that she rolled was being curly and having these leg warmers and if you're a stream watcher Wigglebutt is a curly dapple kit and if you're not a stream watcher the TLDR is that curly dapple was a moss clan cat who has a lot of kids with most being from different mystery cats I think he's had like three different litters technically for now counting Wigglebutt He's currently an elder in Viper Clan after killing the past leader Fuchsia Star, but we're getting off topic. I'm mostly rambling because Wigglebutt joined on the last moon of the year, so I don't really have much to say. Also, I didn't write down who invited her in my notes, but I'm sure it had to be Wormshade if I was inviting someone on the very last moon of the year. Also, we almost went an entire year without having any kits, which is a unexpected outcome this far into the year. Surprising thing to think about considering how many kits we usually have. But yeah, these four are adorable and I look forward to getting to know them. Now let's check in with Snip Cloud and Viper Clan. He is now 62 moons old and he's had an interesting year. Pointing out the main important things, his son Midnight Paw was exiled out of Viper Clan after returning with a collar, and Snip Cloud's other son Water Paw got kidnapped by two legs and is currently lost. And the big thing that happened is that on the same patrol that Water Paw was taken, the Viper Clan deputy was as well. And the game made Snip Cloud deputy of Viper Clan, and I'm scared. I was so shocked on stream, you could totally hear it in my voice and stuff. I was just I was just sitting there like Oh, oh, this is happening. Okay. Um, his deputy ceremony mentioned that Snipcloud had an odd glint in his eye too, and I'm worried about what that means. I also wanted to make a small animatic about him being revealed as deputy at a gathering, but I didn't have the time. But just know that Lizard Snap is not happy with this, and Galaxy Clan feels really uneasy. Serpent Star is really old, and there's a decently high chance that we might get Snip Star soon. He also is currently mentoring one of the leader's kits, but once again, Snip Cloud has gotten his apprentice hurt, and she currently has a claw wound that she's recovering from after Snip Cloud insisted that they trained with their claws out. So again, really concerning, dude. But yeah, that's the main big stuff with Snip Cloud. Again, anything Snip Cloud related can be seen in Viper Clan streams if you're interested. I just go over big things. But let's go take a look at the cats in power in the other clans. Looking at the leaders, Moss Clan now has Thunderstar, who is actually pretty young compared to the other three. He's only like 57 moons old. Also, Frosty Star didn't die. He got washed away by a river, but he came back like two moons later and decided to just retire, saying that Star Clan gave Thunderstar nine lives in his absence. So that was kind of funny. Uh, Frosty Star is now just an elder and he also has a pink collar, which is really funny. Uh, Frosty Star has retaken the name Frosty Dapple, so there's that. And Thunderstar is actually half siblings with Wigglebutt due to his dad being Curly Dapple, but they didn't know each other before this. In J-Clan, Tiny Star is still hanging on even though I thought she would have been gone by now. Not that I want her to be gone, I'm just happy surprise. She's 167 moons old and she's down to five lives after losing one to a dog. And on the Viper Clan side, Serpent Star has three more kits who are currently apprentices this year. He exiled Midnight Paw and I don't know why he likes Snipcloud enough to be deputy, especially since he hurt his daughter, but he did. And Serpent Star is down to seven lives after losing one trying to save someone from a snake. Deputy time, Stone Fawn is here now, and I like to think that she's friends with the Moss Clan deputy, who is very young at 28 moons old, the insecure Antler Stock. They both have deer names, girlfriends, and Antler Stock is a new mom right now, so I like to think that Stone Fawn is giving her tips and stuff. Them being buddies would be really cute. Blue Blossom is still deputy in J-Clan, and he's mates now with Rat Splinter, the medicine cat, which was unexpected, but that's fun. He also has failing eyesight now, but that's not holding him back. And as mentioned, we also have Snip Cloud as deputy of Viper Clan, but moving on. Medicine Cat wise, Galaxy Clan is the same, but Moss Clan picked up two more old men to join us. They have a black void with eyes named Scorch, who is also a former rogue like Valley, and he's loyal, and I like to think that he was Valley's friend. We also have the troublesome Sporefern, who was a former loner. Both are fun and happy we have them. 
Going into J Clan, we have a new face, the 13 moon old Skip Fluff, who is adorable. And as mentioned, Rat Splinter is now mates with the deputy, so that's fun. Garlic Spirit is also here, and she still has her mate and her son, so that's nice. No, no trauma here. And in Viper Clan, we have Tragedy because Burrow Dusk and Porsche Field, the old married couple in the Medicine Cat Den, both died this year, and Pike Paw was left without a mentor. Gray Egg unofficially has come out of retirement to train him, but I didn't add her here because I didn't want to redraw her. But Pike Paw is another Snip Cloud kit who is insecure and and concerningly, he has an interest in the dark forest, so I hope he does okay in the future. Both his litter mates right now are gone, with Midnight Paw being in Galaxy Clan and Water Paw being lost. So I feel really bad for this poor baby. He just he just liked herbs and wanted to be a medicine cat. And last up, we have the Mediators. Pawn joins us in Galaxy Clan, so she's here now. And Moss Clan has a new Mediator as well. His name is Tetra Stripe, but he's bloodthirsty, so I'm a bit concerned with him. Hopefully we don't have a Hope Fern situation here, but he hasn't had statuses about wanting to sabotage anyone, so we'll see. J-Clan still has no current mediator, but they do still have the lost old man who is still alive somehow, so maybe he'll come back. And Ogrefawn is still around, and that's the current positions of power this year. With that, here's year 17. Like I said, I invited too many cats, so oops. Um, I fear what the next year might bring us, so that's my own fault. But all the new faces are just so fun, and it was just really funny that Wormshade was inviting everyone. Holostar is having a rough time mentally, it seems, so we'll have to see if he gets better or worse from here. And that man is immortal, I swear. How have you stayed at eight lives for so long? and the only life that you lost was from White Cough. I might do some Dark Forest drama next year depending on how it goes. Not sure if I want to keep an eye on things for a bit longer before making another animatic, but stuff seems to be brewing there and I'm concerned in general. I'm also really concerned with Flame Bear having hate towards so many cats and overall I have fear. Stone Fawn is a fun surprise for Deputy, and considering Snip Cloud is Deputy in Viper Clan, maybe it's for the best that Lizard Snap wasn't chosen. I'm really interested in Midnight Paw and how he's going to be fitting into the clan, and I'm also interested in all the new couples and crushes going on right now. Let me know who you guys are shipping, by the way, if you have any. I'm curious to see what's on everyone's mind. I hope you enjoyed year 17. Uh, this next year in clan, I'm not gonna be inviting anyone to the clan unless they join on a time skip, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> if you did like the video, I'd appreciate if you could like, subscribe, and check out all the links below, including the official clan gen game, the family tree, and my channel discord with all my other socials linked below, like my Instagram. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace!